Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about what does it really cost to overhaul your engine. I mean, we know you take your engine, you send it to an engine shop, and you get this nice, pretty engine back to hang on the airplane. But what about all the other things you have to do? All the accessories, hoses, cables, um, electrical cables, everything that's been forward, forward on your airplane since it was probably new, that all has to be done and that all adds up to some money. So let's take a look at what all that is involved and uh, we hope you find that useful. Hmm. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So you've got this nice new engine and all the accessories have been done and we're assuming that you've done the carb, the mags, the starter, the alternator, the vacuum pump, all the little bits and pieces that are on your engine that were good for it for its entire run. And so here it is ready to go back in the airplane. So let's talk about each of the things that we also have to change such as we have to change out the control cables. That means that for our airplanes, we're going to be changing the mixture cable. In this case, we're going with a vernier. You're going to be changing the throttle cable, and you can get PMA'd ones from Aircraft Spruce. You're also going to be thinking about changing your um, carb heat cable as well. But anyway, those are all required by the FAA to be changed at time of overhaul, so you can be replacing all the control cables and then you know once you've got all the control cables done then you can start thinking about all the other fun stuff you have on the aircraft but again control cables when you think about it they've been on the airplane for 40 years and it's about time that they get changed and they have some much better made ones today for both throttle and mixture now the electrical cables you know you can have those made with the connectors you need and that's going to be much nicer than the original fabric braided cables that came on our airplane the new teflon mill grade spec uh, teflon cables are just wonderful so you're going to be replacing that number two cable for your ground for your main power and all your jumper bars including your starter and i think you'll find that when you do that along with the relays and the new connectors and everything being cleaned and put back together your cranking speed is going to be not what you were expecting you're going to be cranking faster than you thought and then we finally decide what we're going to do with our hoses. And the one on the top right there is a lifetime hose. The one I'm holding in my hand right there is a Stratoflex and there's an AeroQuip on the side. The AeroQuip and the Stratoflex are both timed hoses like you buy them. Ten years after they're made, they have to be retired. Now the one on the top is a lifetime hose. It's made out of Teflon stainless steel fittings and it is on condition out of the box. So you put it on the airplane and you check it every year and then it's good to go. And I've never had one leak yet and I've been installing these since about 2008 when they first became available. They're not much more expensive. When you compare it to the one right below it, it's only about $10 more per hose. It's well worth it because it's a lifetime hose and in 10 years you don't have to replace them all. Considering that a set of hoses is about $1,100, it's really something to consider that you're going to get a set of hoses that's going to last you for years and years. And by the way, they're available in blue and in brown. And while you've got the engine and the motor mount off, because you know the motor mount's going to be stripped and repainted and checked for cracks and everything, but while you've got the engine off, take the firewall. Now, if you don't have the stainless steel firewall in some of the latest airplanes, then clean your firewall down after removing everything, prime it, paint it with white Emron, and now you'll be able to spot any leaks that you have in your engine compartment. And not to mention, it makes the engine compartment a lot brighter and easier to see the general condition of the engine when you're working on it. Now, the same thing as you did with the cowling, you're going to do to the motor mount. You're going to strip it down, check all the welds for cracks, and when it's all done, you're going to clean it, you're going to prime it, and you're going to shoot it with Emron. Now, in this particular case, the one I did on my on my particular Tiger, I did in black Emron. But if I had to do it again, and as we do them now, we do them in white Emron, so that if you ever have a crack in your motor mount, it shows up as a black line fairly quickly. Well, just like you did with the firewall, you're going to take the cowling on the inside after you've put new exit ramps in, and now you're going to paint everything, uh, prime it, and then you're going to paint it with white Emron. This is going to prevent any corrosion problems you might have, and again, it's going to make looking in your engine compartment a lot easier because it's a brighter, whiter look. And again, if you have any fuel leak, you're going to see a blue stain. Oil leak, you're going to see brown. And since we have no hydraulic fluid, I doubt you ever see red up there. But it's a good indication of what's going on and lets you see it very well. And it's not that much more weight and paint and it adds to the life of your cowling. 
Now along with the new engine, you're going to be addressing all the baffles and the baffle seals of your engine. And what these do is, you know, they cool your engine and they assist in that by directing the air where you want it. Now unfortunately, what you've got on your airplane in terms of baffle seals, they may be worn broken have to be patched or repaired same thing with the seals the original seals probably are no good anymore so anyway what you're doing is you're putting all this together and this is going to assist you with engine cooling and by putting the baffle seals and getting them all properly painted and everything and on the aircraft and the new seals in place you're good for another 20 25 years without having to worry about any cooling issues the baffle seal material that ken's been using i mean we've got a track life of 20 to 25 years on it it's not going anywhere and it looks really good and you can look at some of the other videos on our channel and see some of the ones where Ken goes oh and I did this uh, baffling 18 years ago so here's all your baffling on the airplane and it's all been repaired uh, the patches are in place and then it was primed and painted so they kind of camouflage and then all the baffle seals were added so it does really add a much to your airplane it's going to be a nice a cool running engine and that's going to add to the longevity of that new engine you spent all the money on continuing the tour through the uh engine compartment and firewall forward we find the aux power port so if you've got one on your airplane and it's right below the battery box which you're going to be taking down and you're going to be cleaning all of that but it's a good chance to go through all those you're changing the cables anyway so you might as well clean up all the connectors put new hardware and uh, it's going to look really nice and it's going to be on your airplane and giving you aux power for the next 20 25 30 40 years i mean look how long the originals have last i don't know how much you use them the other thing you're going to be working on is the battery box the battery box shield here you can buy new battery boxes but again it's a place for your battery to sit with all the new cables and it's going to make the whole engine firewall forward look so much nicer when you go to show it to people as a matter of fact as uh, shop monkey likes to say that if you've got a really good engine compartment and really bad paint when you pull in to get fuel just open your cowling so people can see your engine and they won't notice your paint you know and while you're doing all this work a firewall forward take a real quick look at your fuel drains they're the easiest thing that you can change on the airplane we have four of them two on each wing take a look at them if they're old and corroded get some new ones and get them in there and that way you'll be able to fuel your airplane and fly that new engine and you won't have any issues the other thing is, is take a look at your propeller. If it's had 2,000 hours of the engine spinning it, well then it's going to need to be overhauled. And if you've got a Macaulay, well then you know that every 200 hours you have to do the AD on the prop hub. So again, along with your engine, you're going ahead and doing all this work on the prop so that all your accessories will be fine. So when you overhaul your engine, there's a lot more than just having the engine done. When you start adding up everything, you're going to wind up with about $11,000 worth of rebuilds and hoses and cables. And then there's the labor of taking the engine on and off as well. And that's included in the $11,000. But, you know, we hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. Freckles, our cat supervisor, and we'd like to introduce the new cats to you. We have Hopscotch there on the left. The other small ginger is Tarzan. He came with that name, and his sister will be popping up in just a second, and her name is Sweet Pea. These are the new cats that we've adopted into our home. It's going to be a nice little family, and we're having a ball. Thanks for watching.